The Iron Age cometh, so say Razor Fist, and you might see a lot of people around Twitter or even hearing about people commenting in super chats about the Iron Age. But what exactly is it, and why are people talking about it? What does all of this entail? Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce, and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. We are going to do our best today to try and define what the Iron Age is because I feel if there's not at least some version of a definition video out there that's laced in more straight speak and not as sarcastically well told in the comedic form that Razor Fist does, then people might get a little wishy-washy here in about six months to a year when I think this is really going to become a thing. So let's get into today's video and we're drinking cheap beer again. It's cheap. I'm not gonna shout it out it's cheap that's where i'm at <laughs> so the iron age something that was coined by razor fist on his channel when he talked about becoming the culture a few days after eric july went live with his rip averse isom number one campaign now with the radical success of isom number one it obviously stirred up a lot of drive and a lot of people and a lot of inspiration myself that's where this whole journey kind of started it was the it was the revamp of the channel it was the revival of this channel and it gave me something to go for a goal to shoot for razor fist on the other hand did a video talking about becoming the culture and how Eric July and guys like himself who are actually writing and coming up with stories to read that are not politically influenced at all, but simply rely on the classic storytelling that we all know and love. And that this Iron Age is going to envelop so much more of what is out there than just the writers. Now, what makes the Iron Age different than Comicsgate? Well, Comicsgate is actually gets kind of rolled in to the Iron Age. But Comics Gate, to the best of my understanding, the way that it rolled out was a lot of very prominent artists and writers from Marvel and DC, you know, the big two, who are getting called out for political fucking whatever. Anyway, I can't do that. I don't know. Yeah, that was a bad voice. Anyway, but they got called out for all their political opinions, right? And then they decided, well, you know what? I don't need you, Marvel or DC. I can go write my own stuff. Ethan Van Skyver came out with Cyberfrog and really took the world by storm. And Comics Gate has been a thing ever since. But it's been mostly noted by prominent uh, comic book artists and writers who were already in the industry, who were using those talents that they already had and the prominence that they already had to push out their books. And that's not a bad thing at all. And that's just mostly what Comics Gate said seem to be there were other artists out there like john della rose who will pop into this channel from time to time apparently that's new but john della rose out there he is also part of kind of the comics gate thing being that he says that he's a comic book veteran of five years doing his own independent stuff he just released overmind right and so comics gate has a lot of these prominent people some people who are well known and some not so much but it would seem that comics gate and that sentiment has finally traveled down into the masses and people who are deciding that you know what i don't need my break and my breakout moment to be in marvel and dc or with these megalithic corporations what I can do is I can put it out there and do my best to show people that I am not writing politically involved stories and I don't care about your politics. I simply care about providing you with a good story. And that's one aspect of it. So now we have the comics gate creators and now we have what I would call the lower lower level, not, and I, that's a bad way to describe it, but the guys who aren't as prominent coming out with their own books. They're getting started. They're, ro they're ready. They're rolling. They're here. They're writing stories. I I've got books over here. I have books upstairs, which Clownfish TV is also writing their own stuff. I don't know if they would necessarily associate themselves with the Iron Age, but what we're seeing is that we're starting to encompass more creatives. And then one thing that Razor Fist said, who is going to run all of these different medias around these writers, around these creatives? Who is going to do, you know, the non-woke version of, of Reddit? Who is going to blast the megaphone and stand out there and say, hey, the good stories are over here. You guys need to look. Who is going to have that? If you're not creatively inclined, don't worry. You can still 
still contribute. And this is what really, I think, separates the Iron Age from just Comics Gate in and of itself, is that it is being noticed with channels like mine and different writers out there, IronAge.media, who is actually here on the channel just a few days ago. And we're all setting up this apparatus to make sure that we can carry these writers, shout out their stories, and do our best to represent these fantastic stories that are coming out now. And this, I think, is the greatest thing that separates the Iron Age from what came before. It is encompassing all the people who do not want the backing of a megalithic corporation, although it may be nice for some, who aren't necessarily going through traditional publishing, who didn't have notable names before, who didn't have prominent YouTube channels before. I mean, mine is seems to be gaining some level of prominence, although still very small. But all of us are saying, you know what? Be damned with how the others were and let's be ourselves and rise to the challenge. Let's write, let's create, let's shout out, let's get our megaphones and create a fan culture around all of this. So we have multiple layers to this. We have the Comics Gate writers, which really inspired the sentiment. We have the newer age, you know, kind of less prominent writers. And then we need to have that megaphone of people around all of these creatives inside. The question begs to differ. Could the Iron Age involve people who are doing their own video games, their own movies? I don't know. Right now, it's specifically for writing and comic books and all that. That's not to say that it couldn't evolve and envelop all that. But the one thing that this absolutely has is the makings of a fantastic cultural movement. And Gary from Nerdrotic said the other day, I don't think it's a renaissance, so to speak, but it could become one. And I think... I slightly disagree with Gary from Nerdrotic here. I think that this is the beginnings of a renaissance, right? A renaissance, if you will, because I like—I don't like saying renaissance. Anyway, anyway, that's my own speech aside. But what we're starting to see is a cultural movement that is inspiring art and is inspiring story, and it is just inspiring to be around. It's why I'm doing so many videos about the Iron Age. It's why I keep talking about it. It's why I'm excited to do it. It's why I have called myself, and maybe Razor Fist shoots me a, <clears throat> a tweet on Twitter, and he's like, hey, bro, you're not Iron Age. You're just a YouTube channel. Okay, well, you came up with the term. I'm just doing my best to try to define it. Now, one thing that I will say is I was having a, a conversation with... Oh, I think it was uh, Talking Pulp Press, Rob Rhymes over on Twitter, and I believe it was him, and he is actually doing the Dan the Destructor books and the uh, Barbarians of the Storm, so make sure to go check him out when you get the chance. But I was talking with him, and he said, you know, I just don't want there to be any rules with this whole thing. And I said, you know, I disagree. I think there should be one rule to get us started, right? Never gatekeep the fans. The fans should never be gatekept. In fact, the fans should have the loudest voice and the most control over what they think is good or not good involving this Iron Age. But we, as the Iron Age and as the people who are craving good story, must always gatekeep the creators. That's right, I'm even talking about myself in this too. If you, there is a creator out there who is doing stuff and you're like, man, that's, no, you're getting the backing from a large corporation. You're not doing this yourself. You're, you're, you're writing stories that are politically pandering to the real world and what's happening, but you're calling yourself the Iron Age? No, no, you're not. We need to gatekeep the fuck out of the creators because these are the pricks in Hollywood and in the large businesses, Marvel and DC, that absolutely evict Eviscerated every bit of Americana that once existed in our beloved stories. They have ripped people from moments in time that were timeless and brought them to the present and eviscerate them and made them rotting corpses of what they once were. And so, if I may present that idea, I am not the person who created this colloquial term of the Iron Age that envelops this new creativity and this possible renaissance of art and writing and fandom. However, I do think that could be a good rule that if a lot of people just said, yeah, we're going to read the good stories and anybody who tries to say, oh, we're Iron Age, no, you're not. That's, the, oh, that's all I ask. Let's gatekeep against the creators, but never gatekeep against the fans.
With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here on A Drink With Crazy. I appreciate all of you. We are over a thousand subscribers right now. In fact, after I get this video uploaded, I've got to jump over and get ready to do my 1,000 subscriber live stream celebration where we're going to talk about some topics that I think are going to be absolutely fun. So if you guys like what I am doing here, if you've heard about the Iron Age, if you guys are interested in hearing about new creators and new stories out there, subscribe to this channel hit the like button. But most of all, what I would like you to do is right up here, right up top, you guys can become a supporter on Locals, or you can subscribe on Rumble and Odyssey and go over there and get away from YouTube. Because over there, at least we stand more of a chance to speak more freely, to use the free speech that we have, to push these stories as much as we can. But regardless of how you decide to support this channel, I just appreciate you being here. And I look forward to seeing you all next time right here on Drink With Crazy. Cheers, everybody.